Hello, I'm Aaron Pabone, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Last Week in Gaming, the show that gives you a summary of last week's gaming news. This episode is for the week of January 24th through January 30th, 2016. Remember, if you have any news tips from the world of gaming, you can send them to us using this hashtag, LWIGJN, or send us a message to GameJournalismNetwork at gmail.com. First up, Pokemon has released their first ever Super Bowl TV spot to advertise the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. The spot is chocked full of Easter eggs relating to the game's franchise. Can you catch them all? Sony's attempt to trademark the words Let's Play last year was blocked by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. After the blocking, the company signing up for a trademark would have to wait six months to renew or apply again, but last week, the USPTO amended their original blocking. The USPTO noted that the term Let's Play is used in the video gaming, video, and streaming community. The USPTO has refused to trademark for being merely descriptive. Merely descriptive is used when one tries to trademark a word that's often used in general. For example, a company trying to trademark soda to sell soda. Mighty No. 9 has been delayed again. The crowdfunded spiritual successor to the Mega Man franchise was slated for an April 2015 release, but the date was moved to September of last year and again for February 9th, 2016. However, according to the game's creator KJ Inafune in a Kickstarter update, the delay will shift the game's release again to spring 2016. According to Inafune, the reason for the delay is due to bugs being inside the network's modes, issues with the game's matchmaking system, and having to create new code to work for the Unreal Engine 3 system since the engine is no longer being updated. Fire Emblem Fates has been under fire for removing in-game content for the Western localization of the game. Initial concerns were due to the removal of a dialogue tree relating to gay conversion. However, that was proven to be untrue. Nintendo did confirm, however, the cutting of a character-petting minigame. This has led to some consumers asking Japanese game developers to not censor their games for a Western release, or asking other consumers to either buy an imported version of the game, download fan translations, or download patches. One movement that's starting up is called Operation Torrential Downpour. You can look at other operations and movements that are being organized in the links below. Harold Ryan, the CEO of Bungie, has stepped down from his position in the company as the president and has appointed Pete Parsons, the former COO of the company. Here's what Parsons had to say in an announcement on Bungie.net. I want to personally thank Harold for his friendship, passion, hard work, and dedication in helping making Bungie the great company it is today. As a team, we've celebrated many victories and weathered many storms. To the players of Destiny, I want you to know that my number one priority, and Bungie's, is and always has been to deliver great games that we can all share together. I believe that Destiny is a one-of-a-kind experience. I also believe that I've yet to see our studio's best work. My new role here at the studio will be entirely focused on fulfilling that promise. And in our last bit of news, John Bain, also known as Total Biscuit, made an emotional goodbye from social media on Monday. His SoundCloud revealed that his cancer is terminal, and he wants to spend his time with his family and friends. While he himself won't be using Twitter, a friend of his will now be in charge of his Twitter account. Bain also said that he will continue to produce YouTube videos. Bain first revealed his struggle with cancer in 2014 and will receive treatment. However, in October 2015, Bain revealed that the cancer was spreading. During his battle with cancer, Bain was the subject of harassment and recently revealed that his mental health was deteriorating as well. John, we wish to take a moment and wish you the best of luck. That was last week. I'm Aaron Pabone, and check back next week for more gaming news, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to GJN's YouTube channel. Also, check out GJN's official website at GameJournalism.net for the latest news and AirPlay 2 updates. And that's all for this episode of Last Week in Gaming. We do apologize if we have missed any news, but you can help us out by sending news tips to GameJournalismNetwork at gmail.com or using the Twitter hashtag LWIGJN.